Good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I am your host, <coughs> excuse me, Krista Porter here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Uh, Encompass Live is the commission's weekly webinar series where we would cover a variety of topics that may be of interest to libraries. We broadcast the show live every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time, but if you're unable to join us on Wednesdays, that's fine. We do record the show as we are doing today and it will be posted on our website for you to watch later at your convenience. Um, and I'll show you at the end of today's show where you can access all of our show recordings. Both the live show and the recordings are free and open to anyone to watch. So please do share with your friends, family, neighbors, colleagues, anyone you think might be interested in any of the topics we have on the show. Uh, for those of you not from Nebraska, the Nebraska Library Commission is the state agency for libraries. Um, similar to your state library. So we provide services to all types of libraries in the state and you will find shows on Encompass Live for all types of libraries, uh, public, academic, K-12, uh, corrections, museums, archives, et cetera, et cetera, pretty much anything. Um, and we um, do a variety of topics, uh, book reviews, interviews, mini training sessions, demos of services and products, um, we have Nebraska Library Commission staff that come on and do presentations for us sometimes for services and things we're doing here, uh, services or projects we're doing here in Nebraska, but we also also bring in guest speakers, and that's what we have today. Uh, with uh, Joining us today is, as you can see, Shelly O'Brien. Good morning, Shelly. Good morning. And she Thank is you, Krista. Yeah, we're glad to have you here. And she's from our neighbor to the south, Kansas, um, Northeast Kansas Library System. And she's going to talk to us about chit chatting in the library. It's a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> well, good. Thank you. Thank you so much. And good morning, everybody. It was nice to see people from all over the United States this morning on the map. So thank you, Krista, and to the Nebraska Library Commission for this. I want to welcome you and just do a quick introduction of myself. I am a fundraiser by trade. Uh, I've been fundraising for nonprofits for about 20 years. And my second career is uh, libraries. And I'm kind of melding the two, uh, fundraising with libraries. I hmm. just graduated from uh, San Jose State and with an MLIS a couple of weeks ago. And congratulations. To be here and talk to you about chit chatting. All right. Well, so I just wanted to share a quick meme with you. I thought this was funny. <laughs> this kind of gives you an idea of sometimes how I can be awkward in conversations. And I think that there are many times that we feel awkward and avoid chit chat. But what we want to talk about today is how important this is for your library. And this is something that we're going to take a deeper dive into it seems like it's shallow or no big deal but these small conversations really do have a big impact on what you're doing every single day so what is small talk or as my grandmother used to call chit chat <laughs> it's sometimes defined as inconsequential inconsequential conversations but i totally disagree with this definition Instead, I would say that they're gateways to conversations. It's like you're knocking on the door with someone and seeing if they're going to invite you in or not. And it's usually a short interaction about a non-meaningful topic. Now, many of us introverts, and I will put myself into this category, I am an introvert, even though I may be the most outgoing introvert you'll ever meet. Um, I get it that sometimes you just want to recharge your battery, you want to run into Walmart to use the self checkout, you want to just sit at the desk and have kind of a quiet day. And I get that and that's totally cool. And I get that some people feel that they might get trapped, that they have maybe a negative experience where they can't get away from someone. Or you might have been told at some point that it was a waste of time. You should be active and having only deep, meaningful conversations. Um, but, uh, and I like this blah, blah, blah. That's a very 1990s common phrase uh, for empty conversation. 
And even the idea that sometimes micro conversations can be gossipy, which that is not what we're talking about today. We're talking about the small hellos, how are you, how's your day going, and those small conversations. So now I'm going to ask everybody who's watching, why do you sometimes avoid small talk? And maybe you can put that in the chat and Krista can tell me some of the uh, uh, people who share and tell us sure. about why. Yeah. You can why go ahead and type into, you can, everyone can go ahead and type into the questions section of your GoToWebinar interface. You should find that um, and there, click in there and um, let us know what, why would you avoid uh, those kind of chit chats <laughs> or doing, making small talk making small tech and specifically in your library why do sometimes you avoid it and i ask this because i am surprised sometimes when i go to various libraries that sometimes it is the culture of that library is um maybe to be a little bit more quiet or sometimes uh staff members feel like well i'm an introvert this is why i picked librarianship this is why i work here and sometimes uh have a tendency to be a little bit more on the quiet side. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, okay, here we have one answer that came in, it says, um, usually I avoid chit chat because I'm in a hurry or I need to get certain things done. Oh, absolutely. Especially in small libraries because we're running back and forth so fast trying to do 80 different jobs. I completely understand that. Absolutely. Uh, another answer, I uh, don't know what to say sometimes also that i can oh yeah oh absolutely and that's something we're going to talk about today is some uh intros and to get you into that and make it and try to give you some tools so you don't fear it if you don't know what to say um, and i uh, don't want to look like i'm goofing off they may oh, be yeah. well, and, not acceptable yeah mm -hmm. yeah and actually that is what we're going to talk about how this is actually not goofing off uh, if you're in a library. So uh, that is a great point. All three were terrific points. Oh, and we have a couple more here. Um, some good I, good thoughts here too. Um, I'm afraid I'll start talking about something I should not talk about. So mm -hmm. those taboo subjects and you never know what is taboo to someone. That can be true also. Yeah, I am always afraid I'm gonna, you know, put my foot in my mouth or talk about something political when I don't mean to, especially nowadays, it feels like everything is political. So mm -hmm. I, I understand that. Yeah. Yep. yep. And yeah, someone agrees with the one about um, don't want to look like you're goofing off, don't want to get in trouble with admin. Yeah, oh, right. that's that's well, a culture thing. That's, that a, big one. that's a big one. And actually, we're going to talk today about how I am going to say to admin, promote chit chatting. Mm -hmm. This can be one of the biggest changes you can make in your library system, and I'll explain more about that. But I uh, am a from a person who's in an admin position and going to really be advocating for this. Mm -hmm. Yep. And someone else says, "I don't want to. I don't want to come off as being nosy." Oh yeah, yeah. I got a couple tips for you on that one. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah, sometimes what if the other person who you're trying to chit chat doesn't want to from their side? Exactly. And we'll talk about those cues. Yeah, these when, are great. When Thanks. Stop, when to back off. Yeah. Yeah. Well, terrific. I'm going to go on to the next slide and we'll get into some of these. But thank you, everybody, for uh, for giving us those comments. Mm -hmm. So why is small talk important? And I'm going to start off with the pandemic and say that uh, for me, at least, it reminded me that small talk is really important to our happiness that lots of research studies, if you go out and look at psychology today and other places, have shown that the research says that these micro conversations are sometimes the key to happiness. And I know that in April or March of 2020, two years ago, I was going to the grocery store and talking to everyone through my mask. I needed human interaction. And I found that it was so important and would have never guessed that before. I had always kind of backed off a little bit, like you guys didn't want to be perceived as goofing off or to be nosy. But what we found is that actually it is the complete opposite. Now, 
also during the pandemic, like many of you, I watched a lot of television. And so when we were locked down at home, I think I went through Gilmore Girls twice, all the way through. And I know there's probably other people who did the same because it was the number one uh, Netflix show for, I want to say like six months, which is amazing to me considering that it was off the air for so long. But I think the reason was, was because it's about a ongoing conversations between the mom and the daughter and everyone in the town. And there's tons of chit chat in the town. And what does chit chat do? When you have small micro conversations, you're starting to form a community. And so my theory is that people during the pan pandemic were really missing chit chat and that sense of community. And that's why watching this TV show made them feel good is not just because it was wholesome and, and funny, but because it gave them that community aspect and feel. Now, small talk, I think, is a very underrated tool and a vital component in our customer service and because it builds these strong relationships in the community. So why is this important to your small library? And I'm using right there at the bottom a picture of the Paola Free Library in Paola, Kansas. Simply put, your library should be the center of your community. And that's whether you're a small library, a large library, if you're a small library in an urban setting or suburban setting, it doesn't matter. That yes, you are there to help people find books and to answer questions, but you are also there to create community. And this is done by small talk. And I know that sometimes, as you've said, it feels clunky or shallow or goofing off, but what you're actually doing is you're showing interest in the other person. And that really can be huge when it comes to some of the larger issues that your library is dealing with. Now, why is this so important, especially for your small library? Um, I'm gonna give you some of the research and facts on this. I know that you've had on this webinar before uh, Jamie LaRue, who I believe now is doing some work for ALA and is a consultant. Yes. And yes. he was trying to raise funds for a library, his library in Colorado. And he immediately went to thinking that if I got more people in the doorways of my libraries, they will vote for the bond issue that they were asking for. He assumed that library usage was going to be the most important part of his campaign. But what he discovered and was researched was that it was not library usage that was key in the campaign, but it was the interaction of the staff with people in the community. So when someone met um, either a library staff member or librarian who was passionate about the library or books or the interactions that were going on there, that is what made that person an advocate for the library. Just the concept of providing resources and assistance was not enough. And it kind of makes sense in a way because they, some people may feel that it's their tax dollars that are paying for the resources. But the difference between those tax dollars and then advocating for you, that leap in the way of thought is actually you. It is the library staff. And you showing passion and excitement about programming, services, just about them being there is actually a really important component. I would say it's so important that I would actually argue that by creating community in your small library, you're creating a grassroots advocacy campaign. And this is going to support your budget and fundraising. Mm -hmm. And uh, funny enough, I mean, you know, all the different campaigns and political campaigns in this country would absolutely die for this kind of grassroots effort that you have going on every single day. And many of us think that either our library should not be in the game of politics or should not be advocating or that you do it just during budget time when you go to your elected officials. 
but or or maybe it's just the executive director and it's just writing that email to your congressperson but for a small library it is the interactions you have every day and it's creating that sense of community a welcoming space where really everyone is a vip in return what's going to happen is you're creating this grassroots of uh, supporters who will support you if you're running a bond issue if you need a new building if you need additional resources they will support you with the city or your elected officials they will volunteer they will donate money they will use the library more so no matter where they are on the spectrum of how they can help you building that community and having them maybe know your first name or at least acknowledging you and you acknowledging them hello and that you've seen each other before that's how important this is i know that at my la my last library system i lived in maryland outside the washington dc area and i was a fundraiser for i would say a medium-sized system and the staff would often ask me how should we know when a person's a donor or an elected official when they come in uh, they were wanting like a cheat sheet or something and asking me like oh my gosh how, what should i do like how should i serve them and of course my response was well everybody's a vip and that can is is, is just absolutely the truth in that every person that comes in has the ability to help your budget, to help you get additional resources and build your community there. And so everyone should be treated like that VIP. Now, that does not mean that they make up the rules. You have terrific rules and policies in your library. But what that means is you treat them with respect and you have a certain level of interaction with them. And Chit-chatting, while it seems like it might be that small talk, your chit-chat is actually what's going to build those relationships. So how do I get better at small talk? And a couple of the things you've already brought up, and we're going to talk more about those. And if you have some uh, at the end of this slide, I would love what tips you have for the rest of us, and we can kind of share some of those. But it's, you know, number one is just like going to Carnegie Hall, it's practice, practice, practice. And I know that that is a lot to take on for some people, but you really have to make a concerted effort that this is going to be now part of your daily life. And that when you are increasing your small talk, you really need to do it every day. And I know for a lot of introverts and a lot of my coworkers, this is hard. But I think it's also something you can build upon. Start with small interactions. Also, one of the things, especially if you're not good at small talk or you feel you're not good at small talk, is really seek out people in your library system who you know need small talk in their lives. That usually, I would say, are people that are older. Um, for a lot of the older people that come in our libraries, you may be the only interaction that they have in, for several days or maybe for this week. So anytime you can put yourself out there, talk to them, um, ask them how they're doing, really, I know you'll get immediate appreciation from them. Number two is to show a genuine interest. And when you ask someone, is something as simple as how are you today, make eye, con on, make eye contact. Now, I saw something the other day which suggested, and I think I have a bad habit of this, and I realized this during the pandemic, is I actually look at someone, I look at their lips. And I think part of that is some of my hearing is going a little bit, too many concerts when I was younger. And <laughs> someone suggested looking at the irises of their eye. When you are leaving an interaction with someone, you should know what their eye color is or have an idea of what their eye color is. That is actually looking them in the eye. And then listening to them. If they respond with something interesting, 
or if they're allowing you in when you knock on the door and ask how they're doing today, follow up with a couple open-ended questions instead of yes or no questions. Allow the person to talk about themselves. Um, people love to talk about themselves. So if you, let's say you're talking with someone who's, you know, in their 80s or 90s, asking them that open-ended question, asking them to talk about themselves may really help them and may be fascinating also to you, but take that genuine interest. As we talked about earlier and someone brought up, don't talk about things that are maybe too personal or political. Um, you can talk about the library, you can recommend maybe a book on the lucky day shelf. You can talk about the weather, maybe sports. I am convinced this is why a lot of men like sports is because it gives them something to talk about. That is, you know, not too controversial. You can talk about entertainment, things going on in your town, food, hobbies, anything like that. Now, of course, and we'll talk about more of this in a minute, but you want to respect library privacy. And so don't forget your library's policies and rules about uh, customer privacy. But you do want to open up some conversations. Now, if the person starts talking about politics, you have the ability to control the conversation and bring it back around to something else or you can also not react. Now this, I will admit, is very hard for me. I, uh, as I said, I lived in Washington, D.C. for many years where everybody talks about politics 24 seven, no matter what side you're on or, or what you do. And it's really hard not to, you know, get into, oh, well, this person did this, this today or this person did that. But what I'm finding and I'm learning here in Kansas is that I'm getting pretty good at not reacting and just kind of saying, okay, and moving on. And uh, I even got tested uh, on uh, Sunday night. I went out for dinner and uh, went by myself. And so the very kind couple sitting next to me started chit-chatting with me, which I was open to. And about 10 minutes into the chit-chat, they started going down a road that was political. And I just, it was Sunday, I just wasn't kind of in the mood to take the bite. And so I realized very quickly that not reacting kind of shuts it down quickly. Mm -hmm. And just not, and, and your facial expression also is very important cue that they can take that's just like, oh, okay, cool, you know, and then move on to another topic. Number four, avoid why questions. And the reason is the why questions are what or how you're going to get into some more personal items. And that is also going to put the person on defense. So if you get into, well, well, why are you doing that? Immediately the person may be, okay, that's too personal. Or it may feel like you're entering in some of their space. Um, or even if you don't use the word why, maybe that just gives the feeling, you know, those type of questions give the feeling of getting into too personal. So you definitely don't want the person to feel like they're getting defensive. Number five, listen, listen, listen. And I know this kind of goes back with number two, but it's so important that I'm going to say it twice. And active listening is the best way to engage. That means do not interrupt. That means do not offer advice. And that's hard sometimes for me, especially in a library setting. Often it's good to say, would you like a recommendation? Or can I help you with that? If then you get permission for, from the person, great. Sometimes a person just wants to vent or just wants to talk about something. Mm -hmm. They may actually say, no, I. I'm good, I just wanted to, to get that out. And that makes me feel better. I think you I have that problem. I know I, I hate, I, I try to fill the silences too much. I think I, yes. I struggle with like, let them think, let them do their thing. Don't keep jumping in with your, what you wanna say, let them just you know, sit back and just shut up. <laughs> Krista, that's a really bad habit I have too. Mm -hmm. And 
silence is not the worst thing in the world. Mm -hmm. You know, feel like you have to fill that void sometimes, but what if you didn't? You, you still are gonna, you're gonna fill that void with your facial expressions, with your nonverbal expressions. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I think that's okay. And so sometimes letting the other person um, speak uh, is really great. I'm gonna give you a, uh, another story. I, I'm a big storyteller, so uh, please excuse me. But one time, as I said, I'm a fundraiser. And at the beginning of my career, I was living here in Lawrence, Kansas and was doing fundraising for the university here. And I got sent to Hayes, Kansas by one of my coworkers. And she said, hey, you're gonna go have lunch with this um, husband and wife. He's a doctor, she's a nurse. Um, you're going to talk about the new nursing building, and I think they're really terrific people. You're really going to have a lovely lunch. And so we went to lunch, and for 40 minutes of lunch, they gave me a list of everything they hated about the university. And I mean, from beginning to end, it was, um, you know, when I was a student, this was wrong. Um, I saw this in the latest magazine. I heard this in the news. I don't know why the administration does this. And it kept going. And I just smiled and was like, okay, okay. I mean, there was no use for me getting defensive. There was no use for me arguing with them. And even at one point, I said to them, I hear you. I, you know, you, you, I can understand why you guys want to vent. And I completely understand what was going on. And I'm sorry, I'm sorry that you're having this bad experience. But more than anything, what I did was listen to them. So I left the luncheon thinking this did not go well. I got back to the office and my boss immediately said, oh, hey, how was your visit in Hayes? And I said, oh, I'll tell you more in a minute. It wasn't that great. Um, you know, I don't think we're going to raise any money from these people. And he goes, oh, that's funny because they just called and said that their check's on the way. And I was kind of surprised. I was like, what are you talking about their check's on the way? And it then dawned on me, all they wanted was for somebody from the university to listen to them. And they had years of just wanting someone and to feel like they they wanted to be heard now the really funny part of part of the story was at the end of the conversation uh with this nurse she said oh and by the way i want to talk about my basketball tickets i'm way up at the top of allen field house and i just want to say i'm too old to be up there <laughs> and I at her and I said, you know what, I'm really young and I feel lucky to be up there. So, but they were a very sweet couple. They were dedicated to the university. They did make a very nice contribution, but more than anything, they had been waiting for someone from the university to sit and listen to them. And I provided them 40 minutes of my time to listen and that's all they wanted. And so that was a Took me a long time to learn that lesson, but I appreciated them teaching that to me. A couple more here, and then we'll open it up to comments. So uh, number six, try to put the person at ease. So if there's anything you can do to make them feel more comfortable in the conversation, do it. Um, pretend that you're the host or hostess of a big party, and it's called the library. And you are welcoming your guests to the party, you're making sure that they're having a good time. You're helping them get resources, which unfortunately is not usually snacks or drinks, but you're helping them get other resources in the library, just like you would go get them a beverage if they were in your home. And making them feel at ease often can get the small talk going. Or, you know, to give them that eye contact and say, hey, nice to see you again. You know, if people realize that you have seen them day after day, that's how you get the small talk going. I know personally, I go to the same coffee shop by my house most days. I don't go because it's the cheapest. I 
you know, it's, it's great, but it's, you know, there's other coffee shops in town that are better. But I stopped by because the lady named Robin, uh, the stone lady, always says, hi, good morning. Do you want the usual? And it's just really nice. It, it, it's, again, a sense of community. And number seven on here, and some of you are not going to like this, put your phone away. There is nothing worse than walking into a library and seeing someone on their phone, because what it says to everyone is that you want to be someplace else. That does not mean you can't have your phone on you for emergencies or to assist people or to keep in contact with your children or whoever. But if you need to talk to a friend or your children, go into the back. But having your phone out by yourself does give the view of I'm too busy and doing something that's not library related. And so put the phone away. Now, Krista, does anybody else have any suggestions or tips? Is anybody else typing in? Um, let's see here. Um, if anybody does have anything, go ahead and type into the um, question section again. Um, let us know if you have any ideas about how you've, if you've, you've, you've done something that's been, gotten better, made you better at it. Um, we do have a comment from earlier when you're talking about how you, um, you never know who would be a donor, you know, that oh, everyone, yeah. mm -hmm. just said everyone is important in the library. Definitely. Everyone. You never know and who's going to be. Yeah. I'm going to, you know, it's funny. I, um, when I got my MLIS from San Jose State, uh, I took a class that had us go through Ryan Dowd's training for working with homeless people which was really good. If you haven't done it, I would highly suggest it or even just sign up for his weekly emails. They're great. But one of the things that Ryan Dowd does that I really am impressed with is um, he really gets you into that mindset of the more you treat people um, who are transient or, or homeless with respect, the better your interactions are going to be with them. And to some degree, that's kind of what you're doing with VIPs and with people with small talk is you're saying, yes, yes, there are rules here, but I'm showing you respect and giving you that respect and time with our conversation with small talk mm -hmm. um, means that we have that give and take. And it's funny that I was going through the training and thinking, you know, that Ryan Dowd could actually give this very similar talk about dealing with major donors. Um, because really, it's the same boundaries and respect. Um, you're not asking donors or VIPs uh, or allowing them to have anything more than than you would with a homeless person. So it's it's just it's giving them attention and respect. Mm -hmm. And everybody deserves that. Yep. Everybody um, deserves that. So we did have a few comments that just came in too. Sure. Um, let's see. The first one here says, I found that talking about the library, in particular, what they think are secrets of libraries, but they really aren't, <laughs> works well for me. That is awesome suggestion. Yeah. So when I was doing fundraising uh, in Washington, D.C., I that was one of my tricks uh, to get people more involved was I would call it my inside baseball conversations. Mm. If you uh, grew up in the 70s, there used to be a show on television on the weekends called Inside Baseball, where it would give you kind of like uh, scouting reports and things you wouldn't find on regular, uh, the, the regular news or TV shows. Of course, now ESPN uh, gives you everything inside baseball. But uh, I would have these conversations with donors where I would stop and explain something to them that maybe we weren't letting everyone in DC know. Or I would explain how we made a certain decision. This was our thought process. And when they got that insider baseball information, they did feel like a VIP. And so sometimes I would send those out in newsletters or email newsletters of, hey, did you know how and why we do this at the library? or we made this decision. I think that is a great idea. And that's that's a great fundraising and community tool that really would uh, help your community understand what you do. Yeah, and then they have some knowledge and, and some like ownership of it themselves too, if they feel like you're sharing with them how this, you know, exactly, oh, let me tell you all about this. Yeah, Absolutely. Well, and I'm 
constantly surprised, and I know you guys get this, but I'm constantly surprised by the questions I get of, oh, you're a librarian, so you read all day, or, or you, you know, um, I wish. must be boring just sitting at a desk, you know, or, or sitting at the front desk. And I think giving them that insight of everything we do and the decisions we make actually gives them insight into how complicated running a life. It actually, it, I mean, you know this, is so difficult and there's so many things that we do and all the skills that we bring. And it's great to share that because you're actually elevating the status of our profession. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, let's see, here's another one um, that says, I have some patrons that say, oh, I've, I've had to deal with this too and I work in a uh, university library and just when people call me on the phone they say this but i have some patrons that say i hate to bother you but could you help me oh, i always yeah. say hey that's what i'm here for it's my job to help how can i help you i <laughs> well I and here at this desk that's exactly the whole point of this whole setup here <laughs> that is the whole point and now i think some of that is them just being nice they're prefacing the comments um, by showing that they are kind and they um, are, are trying to show that um, they do acknowledge that you could be busy. Mm -hmm. But I agree with you. Uh, let them know that it is not a bother, that mm -hmm. you are there to talk to them. I also have to, right now I'm in a position for a regional library system where I'm helping librarians with their fundraising and PR. And that's also what I have to remind librarians is I have to say to them, hey, don't worry about calling me or emailing me. Mm -hmm. If you need something, that's my job is to help you. And I'm guessing if you're asking for this resource or for, for help, others need it too. So please ask me so I can create this fundraising tool or this help for you and share it with lots of people. Sure. So even librarians have trouble. And I've seen some places where I think I think it's difficult. You know, you're if you have like a reference desk or a circulation desk, mm -hmm. and there's there is a computer there that you're working on because you're doing something. They assume yes. you're too busy working because you're on the computer. But that's only because that's what part of the job is. Is while I'm sitting here, I have something I'm supposed to be. I'm looking up something for someone else. I'm working on someone's circulation record, whatever it is I'm doing. But that doesn't mean I can't also you know, it's a dual thing. I'm doing both things, but they don't always know that. So I've seen exactly. some libraries or things that have like a sign that says, please interrupt me or please ask <laughs> me for help. Or it's just something that lets them know as they come up to the desk, or they come near you and they see you that it's okay to interrupt, you know, something that will proactively, you know, let them I know. I like that a lot. Yeah. Or even, and I know some of your administrators aren't going to like me saying this, but get out behind the desk, get out yep. front. Roving That's librarians, yep, yep. Roam the library. I mean, I sometimes think that we are too attached to our desks as a profession, and I get that. And you know, especially during COVID times, I get that. Um, you do sometimes like to, for there to be something in between you and the other person, but then there's something in between you and the other person. So uh, our profession is to get out there. And so come, you know, come out from behind the desk. Um, I know some libraries are really good at this and some, you know, you would have to pry people away. But <laughs> if you can practice that, I think that will help your small talk too. Yeah. I know some libraries I've seen, they they also have made it an actual like service where they have um, a tablet that they can yes. go to the library and just see, you know, kind of like when you're in a store, which I know some people do and don't like this. Can I help you with anything when you're just browsing the shelves in the, you know, the racks in the store, but they bring a tablet with them and they see if someone looks like they need help and they ask, and then they can quickly on that tablet, well, let me search the catalog. Let me, you know, so you have something right I there. Love that. That. I mm. love that. Now I, now remember though, I'm the person that likes the Walmart greeter. <laughs> and, you know, supposedly Walmart got rid of the reader, back, yeah. <laughs> but at least at my Walmart, they brought it back. I actually feel like something's missing if the person is not there. Mm -hmm. I just like it. Um, I There are stores that I go into and, and some are like, you know, they sell expensive items and I'm shocked that they don't greet me when I walk in. Mm. Because if I don't get acknowledged, 
I sometimes immediately feel, well, like they don't care whether I'm here or not. And then if that actually, I think, has an influence on whether I'm buying something or not, which blows my mind. Um, but sometimes it does because we've all been trained that when you walk into a building, um, someone should be at least a hello, good morning. Hey, how are you doing? Can I help you? And that includes libraries. That is part of the conversational script of walking into a building, a public building or a store. And so if that is not there, people may feel like, oh no, I am bothering someone or I'm in the wrong place. Mm -hmm. um, and then another comment here, Gail says, I have my best talks with patrons when, when I'm shelving books. You're out there in the, in the stacks. Nice. Yep, and they just come up and say, hi, can I, <laughs> let's chat. I about love it, Gail, because that is really a great example of how you can be working and have that interaction. And I would also say it does not matter who is out there shelving the books. If it's a page, if it's an intern, a volunteer, we should be interacting and we should be having discussions. And even if you can empower your interns or pages to say, hey, you know what? I don't have the answer to that question, but let me walk over and find that out. Do you want to follow me um, or do you want to stay here or, you know, then that gets the small talk going. So empowering your staff with various phrases, I think can really help with that. Okay. So a couple more slides. I wanna remind you about, the, about privacy. Uh, that is something that we do wanna keep uh, uh, an eye on because we don't want the conversations getting into weird space. And so please review the privacy rules of your library and remind your staff of this. I think especially at this time, it's really important. Um, sometimes I forget this, but just a couple of weeks ago, one of the libraries that I work with here in Kansas, um, we had a situation where the husband came in and wanted to know what his wife had checked out. And we have to remember that that is private information and that, you know, it does not matter if it's a small town, a large, you know, community, that we do need to make sure that we do protect people's privacy and that that is one of the fundamental parts of running a library. So now a couple additional thoughts. I, as somebody brought up, not everyone is going to want to talk with you and that's okay. But when you are opening this up and you're giving them the hint, and if they want to move on, it's fine. Let them move on. Um, it may take several times for them to come in the library and be engaged. Another item that I want you to think about is you are allowed to end the conversation. And I think that may be one of the top reasons I sometimes avoid conversations is I don't want to hurt another person's feelings if it's going on too long or if it's veering into a conversation that I don't want to talk about. So there are things that you can say like, hey, it's been a pleasure to talk with you. Let's continue this next time you're here. And then start to walk away. Your nonverbals are going to show, uh, show where you're going with this. And they'll follow the cues. Very few people will actually not pick that up as a cue. But even if they don't, you are allowed to say, hey, I've got to get back to work now, but thank you so much. Hey, let's talk next time. Just an easy way to get out of that. So I am going to go ahead and wrap my slides up. But the bottom line is small talk can be a huge change for your library. When we are dealing with budgets that are getting cut every day, when we are talking with customers, who really need our interaction because of the pandemic or because they're getting older and they're not spending time with other people, you are going to create a community by having these small micro conversations and you're gonna enhance your library. Um, I think you need to look at it as being something that can be fun, it can be interesting, um, it can talk to your uh, administration talk to your librarians about how it really can 
help your advocacy. It can help your fundraising. Um, and think about it from this way. Let's say, a, as I said, I'm a fundraiser. So if a fundraiser came in and wanted to really check you guys out about giving a donation, would they want to give money to someone who would not chat with them? or someone who would not ask questions. So look at it from that perspective. And I think you'll see that um, you really, really want to up your game on the, on the chit chat. Now, speaking of chit chat, I would love to connect with you. So here's <laughs> my information. And I am, as I said, a, a, a library consultant for the Northeast Kansas Library System. I do not sell consulting, so don't worry, you're not gonna get a sales pitch from me, but I am here to help and to talk and hang out. So here's my I Instagram. I'm not that kind of a consultant that you have to hire. Yeah, this is just you. It's just like here at the Library Commission here in Nebraska. We're here to help, help the libraries. and Exactly, and I am happy to do it. I'm hoping to have a uh, small website up soon where I'm offering, you know, links to things like this and some more information because I, what I really want to see is libraries succeed because uh, I am so proud of all the libraries we have here in Kansas. And I know that your libraries are just as good, if not better. And really so much of it is, is centered around people. And I want to see you succeed. So any tips or any help I can do, I'd be thrilled to help with. Absolutely. Yeah. And I think, um, you mentioned about the administration that was something that came up multiple times from people being at the very beginning that it seemed to be a uh more of a concern than any of, a, of, of over anything else of what if it seems like i'm goofing off what if you know they think i'm just yeah. getting with something and socialize some someone and socializing so i i think i'm glad that you gave like the, the statistics and data and you know proof of like this is how this is the actual effect and it does need to become part of your service part of your job part of your job description maybe or something that this is something we do so either as an administrator you should get that out there or bring this to your administrator to your, to your library director whoever's in charge and say hey can we you know we, we should you know try and practice this get this more ingrained that it's okay to be doing these things that it's not goofing off that it's, yeah, it's absolutely absolutely and also for a lot of people remember this when you become an administrator because, you know, um, I often find that people when they're in more entry level or junior jobs go, oh, my administrators don't, it's, or my boss doesn't understand. But mm -hmm. then because you've been trained in that culture or system, you don't change it. So when you become an administrator, or you have an opportunity, remind people or lead by example and say, this is not goofing off. Um, talking with people is an important part of our job and that you are demonstrating that and you never know where it's going to go or i view it as that person is you know a voter a taxpayer who is paying for our services mm -hmm. they uh, could be a volunteer they could be a donor who knows where they're going to be in a couple months mm -hmm. um here at, at Nichols uh, the other day, we get the Kansas City Business Journal, and I was showing uh, my coworkers the front cover of the Kansas City Business Journal was a gentleman that was my intern at one point. <laughs> he was now on the cover of this like major magazine. Wow. He's running a huge healthcare system in Kansas City that's nonprofit. And I'm so proud of him, but remember today's intern could be your boss next week. So uh, don't <laughs> yeah. forget to exhibit that and to train and to remind people of those great practices that you want to see changed and updated where you are. Yeah. Yep. Yep. And Gail says, yes, the patrons are our real boss. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> and, you know, in Kansas right now, and I'm sure other parts of the country is the same way, you know, budgets are getting tighter. We mm. have it here in Kansas kind of this, you know, anti-tax view sometimes. And so you really want to promote that, yes, um, community is important. And, you know, I don't want to sell the library, but on the other hand, we have a really good product. We have something that is promoting education, promoting jobs, uh, helping job seekers, we're promoting small businesses. 
we're helping uh, people with lifelong education. We're helping teens and seniors. I mean, we've got some great things to sell. So getting out there and talking more about what we do is really important. And again, it's not listing off necessarily the 600 things that we do because we do so much. Yeah. But it's really connecting with people on what we do and how we can help them and how libraries really are a, a really important part of the American experience and they're an important part of our community experience. For everyone, yep. For everyone. Yeah, for everyone it's in just, the community, It's yeah. really, I mean, I, I'm sure most of the people that are uh, watching today, I don't know about you, but I grew up in my library. I, uh, I'm a mid-continent uh, library kid from Independence, Missouri, and I know uh, that's, that's where I spent so much of my time, where maybe other kids grew up on the play, playground or, or on the ball fields. I grew up at my library, and I'm so grateful that we had really outstanding services. I mean, I'm so lucky. Mm -hmm. Yep. And someone else, Karen says here, it's great. It's, it is great to connect with all types of patrons. Oh, absolutely. You will also learn so much from them. If you're a lifelong learner and you really stop and think about it, you're going to learn a lot from people. Some of it may be knowledge that you didn't even know you needed. Some of it may be important things like how the library is viewed in the community. Um, it may be very important to know what people think of the library and get that information to the executive director or to the administration on public relations, fundraising, whether you're going to have a new building or not. Knowing what people think about you as an organization is very important. You can learn a lot. Mm -hmm. All right, so as, let's see here, I'm just checking my comments. As Shelly said, this is the, that's just is the wrap up of her slides here. Um, anybody have any other, any questions? Uh, we still have um, officially like five minutes left in our show mm -hmm. hour, um, uh, but we'll stick around as long as people wanna chat and have questions. Um, yeah, happy so to. Last minute desperate questions or comments or thoughts, get them typed into your question section. Um, also, I will make a pitch for uh, um, one of the ways that I uh, got my job here in Lawrence, Kansas, was someone connecting with me the last time I spoke at a virtual conference. So uh, don't underestimate connecting with others within our community. Um, I know it sounds odd, but librarianship is a very small community in many ways. So connecting with each other is really important. And I didn't realize that until uh, I, I had that opportunity. So do connect with each other. And uh, also, if I can encourage anyone to speak on this forum or other uh, virtual forums, please do. Absolutely, we're happy to have more presenters. We, as I said, we have we we brought you in, but we've had presenters from um, across Nebraska, our, our libraries, um, and across the country here. And um, they do great, yeah. And it's it gets you oh, yeah. out there, uh, especially with our show here. We're free and open to anyone to watch. Like I said at the beginning, so. Um, and you saw that map if people were here early of who was registered for today's show. We had. 50 something registrations and from That's 19 crazy. other states besides Nebraska. So this is a, yeah. you know, I we're the it. Nebraska Library Commission, but this is a national forum. Get you out there. Yeah. You never oh, know. Yeah. <laughs> I saw lots of people on the East Coast. So uh, uh, shout out to them. Uh, while I love Lawrence, Kansas, it's a, it's a gem. I, I do miss DC a little bit. So uh, <laughs> of say hello to everyone there. <laughs> All right. So I didn't see anybody have any desperate questions. Just one last comment from Gail says, thanks for the great chit chat this morning. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I hope I've changed your mind on this. And please go out and let your coworkers know that we all should be doing this and should be practicing it every day. So mm -hmm. thank you, Krista. Thank you to the Nebraska Library Commission. I appreciate sure. it.
absolutely. We're happy to have you with us. Um, and maybe we'll have you on a future episode and talk oh, about. Would love it. And we can get more into fundraising too. I would love it. Yes, that's definitely would be an important topic that everybody is going to want to hear about. Definitely. <laughs> All right. Um, I think we will um, wrap things up then. Um, since nobody had any other questions or anything they needed to ask of you, thank you so much, Shelley, for um, being with us here this morning. Thank you, everyone, for uh, joining us this morning. Um, this is great. Got lots of tips and tips and tricks. <laughs> um, and Shelley's slides will be available afterwards with the recording. She'll send them to me, and we'll have those available. So all of her um, everything on there you will have um, access to afterwards. So I'm going to pull presenter control back to my screen so I can show you. There it goes. Um, here is our right, page for today's show. Yep. Um, you can go back to our okay. main Encompass Live page here. Uh, <laughs> if um, if you uh, use your search engine of choice and just type in Encompass Live, the name of our show, okay. we're the only thing that comes up. So um, nobody else is allowed to call and themselves that. <laughs> um, so um, these are our upcoming shows, but right underneath there is a link to our archived Encompass Live okay. shows. Today's show will be on the top of the list. Um, we'll have a link to, we post our recordings onto the Nebraska Library Commission's YouTube channel, and then um, a link to the slides that'll be on here. Um, I should have everything processed by the end of the day tomorrow at the latest. That's usually how long it takes me. So um, everyone who attended today's show, and registered and pre-registered, even if you weren't able to join us live, we'll get an email from me letting you know when it is ready. Um, while we're here, I'll show everyone, um, we do have a search feature here. If you wanna search our show archives to see what other topics we've had on the show. Um, you can search the full archives or just the most recent 12 months if you want something very current. And that is because for um, those of you not in Nebraska who haven't known, um, Encompass Live has been around for a while. Uh, we um, The show premiered in January 2009. And this page has all of our recordings going back to then. I'm not going to scroll all the way down because it would be crazy. But <laughs> um, So just pay attention to the original broadcast date of any shows that you, any recordings that you watch. Um, some of the Topics will stand the test of time. The information will still be good and, and useful and relevant, but some things will become outdated. Some um, shows um, information will become have changed drastically. Some services or products might not exist anymore or have changed or just not exist anymore. Links might be broken. Um, so just pay attention to that date. All of them have that original broadcast date on them. Uh, but as we, you know, as we are librarians, we keep things for historical purposes and make sure they're available. We'll always, as long as we have somewhere to put them, we'll always have our full recordings up here. Um, we do also have a Facebook page for Encompass Live. If you like to use Facebook, give us a like over there. Um, we post reminders about the shows coming up, logging in, when our private recordings are available, when new shows have been added. Um, we also put things out onto um, the Library Commission's Twitter and Instagram using the hashtag EncompLive. That's our little abbreviation. So give us a like over there. <laughs> Um, so that will wrap it up for today's show. I hope you'll join us next week when our topic is collection development. Can you see me? Collection development for marginalized communities. Um, we are bringing in uh, librarian Laura Pitts, who's from the Scottsboro, oh, I think this is Arizona. I got a typo there, public library, um, to talk about doing collection development in your library for um, all sorts of um, communities. You never know who is going to be wanting to use your libraries. Uh, so um, she's going to talk about that with us next week. So please do sign up for next week's show. And any of our other topics we have here, here's our next two months worth of shows right there on our page. So thank you everybody for being here. Thank you so much, uh, Shelly, for being here with us. And hopefully we'll see you all on a future episode of Encompass Live. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.